So I'm gonna make this most simple, effective demonstration of how to sharpen a saw. So the few things to really look out for. And once you understand those couple of little things, you can sharpen a chainsaw really easily. Hello and welcome to ClimbingAlbrus.com. My name is Dan Holiday, and in this video I'm going to show you how to sharpen a chainsaw. So I'm going to make this most simple, effective demonstration of how to sharpen a saw. So the best thing to do is get your chainsaw, play this video while you've got your saw in front of you and sharpen it along with me. We can do um, a sharpen along and it, it kind of should all make sense if you're doing it there and then while you're watching this video. Um, the reason I'm going to make this video and make it as simple as I possibly can to illustrate how to get um, a chain sharp is because I remember when I was being shown how to sharpen when I was at college and you know I was sharpening with a file but I just didn't like I could see the the little filings coming off but I didn't really understand what made a, a chain sharp the few things to really look out for and once you understand those couple of little things you can sharpen a chainsaw really easily no matter if you're a homeowner watching this or if you're a trainee arborist or if you've been an arborist for a while and you still can't really sharpen a saw that well which there are quite a lot of those a few little tips to start with um, number one wear gloves because and you might think that's stupid but if you don't wear gloves there will come a point where you'll be using maybe um, a pretty dull file and you'll be using loads of force and it'll slip and you'll slice your finger so definitely wear gloves um, next thing you can use a sharpie just to mark mark the tooth that you start on sometimes it depending on what size bar you've got you'll you'll you can spin it round and where they join the two links together there might be two cutting teeth on the same side so that you can always like use that as a gauge but if not, use a sharpie and just kind of colour in the tooth that you're going to start on um, and then you know where you've started and where you'll finish. I'm not going to go into um, the chain and the pitch of chain, the gauge of chain, all that kind of stuff. You go and find out what chain you have, look it up online if you don't already know, find out what file size you need because that's imperative to getting a nice sharp chain. Um, so I do all that. I'm not going to cover any of that. This is purely about how to identify what's made a blunt chain and how to get it sharp. Make sure you've got a nice new sharp file because if you've had some files rattling around in a metal tin or rubbing against the files and they go blunt, you, no matter how good you are at sharpening, using a blunt chainsaw file is the worst thing in the world. Um, it takes forever. You have to put it in so much force. Um, so which means that you can't just let the file do the work you end up then like putting a lot of pressure on the file and kind of it ends up kind of coming round rather than just going straight so I use a sharp file that is number one secondly if you've got a vise obviously that's going to make things way easier um, if you don't have like a workshop vise you can buy a little stump vise which you can tap into um, like a chunk of wood so if you've got like a, a nice big round of wood wherever you're sharpening, you can do that. Or if you're on a job site and you've felled a tree and you've got some wood, you can tap in the stump vise. And then the last option, you know, especially as a tree worker, if you're on site and you just need to quickly sharpen a saw, uh, often if there's no stump vise, no nothing, um, I would end up like kind of sitting above the body of the saw and leaning over and sharpening it that way. But that gives you a terrible back after a while like you you kind of hip flexor muscles get crushed and uh, it's not that enjoyable but you know you got to do what you got to do sometimes so using a vice is best make sure your chain is tight see this one is, is pretty loose if you go to try and sharpen this as you try and sharpen it'll keep moving the chain and pulling the chain so you're not going to get a consistent sharpen so make sure your tension the chain up correctly first so now you can see as I go to try and sharpen that 
chain doesn't really move too much but it's still it's not too tight a lot of people do this they try and like feel the like how sharp it is so feeling is the worst thing that you can do because most chains always feel sharp but if they've lost the edge they're still going to feel a little sharp but that doesn't mean it's sharp so the best way to see if it's blunt is by visual inspection some of the teeth on this chainsaw are not too bad and some of them are a bit worse than others now this chain doesn't look all that bad maybe to the untrained eye and that's what i'm going to show you here because to me this is pretty blunt and if it got to this point because it's hit a bunch of dirt it, it just doesn't cut very well and as a professional arborist i would be annoyed when the saw gets to this state so this is your witness line so that is once you've sharpened the tooth down to this line you don't want to go past that and you need to buy a new chain okay but that gives you a guide to the angle that you want to sharpen the chain to so i always use that as a guide of for the angle that i want to follow so if you look at the whole of this tooth it's kind of like one color all right until you get to the very edge and you see the light is getting it's catching the light because it's lost its edge and so those different angles of the metal are catching the light differently to to the rest of this tooth here obviously you can see that the witness line is catching the light differently because the metal is angled differently to the rest of that top this top flat surface and then you get to the very edge and it, you see that bright shiny silver line and then you see that the tooth on the edge is a little bit more rounded it's catching the light of that tooth that corner tooth which is the part that really initiates the cutting has completely lost its edge and so we need to take that basically we need to sharpen this down to about here so it gets completely rid of of all of that rounded bird over edge and we can start afresh so we need to sharpen that down oh i see that one's really bad so that one ideally should be sharpened all the way back that should really give you an idea of what we've got to do now the black marker so that's going to be the we're at the starting point but i'm going to start on the left hand teeth let's get sharpening with a nice sharp file you don't need to put, apply much force sharpen forward just really loosely dragging it back and then sharpen forward So when you're sharpening you need to ensure that you keep all the teeth pretty much the same length so if one side got hit really hard you don't take that side down further than the other side just because one side needed sharpening more you have to take both sides down the same amount unless you hit something really like a nail and it only really affected like two or three teeth and those are really bad don't ruin your chain by taking all the teeth down to the size of those three teeth that got ruined but if one side gets hit really bad the whole way around then you've got to take down both sides so that they match this is what your teeth should look like from the sides you've got that nice rounded section there now if this is flat that's not going to work that's not going to cut very well if this is if you haven't got that groove rounded there so you need that you see it from this angle from on the other side got that nice round section there okay so we've got that sharpened the next thing you need to do is find your starting point and then just go along i've got like this little wooden brush here just go along and kind of tap those front edges and that will get any any kind of burrs and like the the filings off because if you if you start cutting and there's still a bunch of like um loose like filings and metal that's attached that hasn't come off it can actually just 
slightly take off the sharpness of that that edge so just go around just tap all those like those kind of loose bits of metal that might still be hanging on on the edge then you get back to your starting point and the final piece of the puzzle you need a flat file and this is um, a tool for me measuring the depth gauges now the depth gauges are the piece in front of the cutting tooth and it basically sets how much um, like the size of the chip it's going to take off on each cut depth gauges put the depth gauge tool on the top of the cutting tooth and if the depth gauge rises up higher than these sides, then you need to file it down until it's level. So you can see there, this depth gauge is pretty good, so that doesn't need filing. You don't have to do this every time. Um, depends how how badly the, the chain needed sharpening and how much you have to take off. Sometimes you'll need to do it, sometimes you won't. Um, so that looks pretty good. So if you're pretty consistent with the depth gauges, then if a few of them, you need check a few of them. If a few of them are good, then it should all be good. You don't need to go around checking every one. Uh, it's rounded, so you so you want to try and keep that rounded edge. You don't want just to do it on the top and it just be flat. Put that in front of the cutting tooth, so you don't end up like grinding off the front of the tooth. And usually I'll do maybe like three, uh, not putting loads of pressure on. So you go across the top and then as I go across the top, I'll, I'll kind of round it down. So top and then round it off, top and then round it off. So like this. And then check it again. And then if it needs more, do a few more. And then once, so once you've done that first one, you'll be like, right, I've done four passes with the flat file and now do four on every single tooth uh, on every single de depth gauge if you've done everything right go out test it on a piece and see what it's like if it's not cutting come back in make sure the rakers are all done if the rakers are good and it's not cutting then you've not sharpened it well enough I hope you're able to follow along with that and that you understand what makes a sharp chain from now on because um, that is that's the key is if you understand what a sharp chain is and what it looks like you know how to to get that by through sharpening the saw so hopefully you understand hopefully you could follow along as we did it if you need to use this video every time you sharpen maybe you don't sharpen a saw very often then then great if it helps you great if it's going to help other people, um, if you want to pass this on to your colleagues because they don't know how to sharpen, show them this and hopefully everybody will be sharpening saws in no time. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to check out some of my other videos, then click one of these videos here. Once again, thanks for watching. Much appreciated.